am literally an idiot. <laughs> this is like the third time I've gone to record this video. I'm not even kidding. I am... <laughs> We're doing it. Okay. Also, please excuse my eyes right now. Like, I have eczema on my eyelids, so... Uh, one of my eyelids looks like 80 years older than the rest of my body. Like, ew. What is art? What a dumb question. Yet, people desire an answer. Fine. What is art? Well, art is a broad term, but one could loosely define art as a form of creative expression that involves either imagination, skill, or both. That leaves a lot of room for subjectivity, which means what makes art, well, artistic is constantly debated. However, to give art a rigid rubric to grade its excellency or lack thereof is a fool's errand. Russian writer Leo Tolstoy wrote an essay titled What is Art? in which he tries his very hardest to define what makes something art. Art begins when one person with the object of joining another or others to himself in one and the same feeling expresses that feeling by certain external indications. If only the spectators or auditors are infected by the feelings which the author has felt, it is art. And however poetical, realistic, affectful, or interesting a work may be, it is not a work of art if it does not evoke that feeling, quite distinct from all other feelings, of joy and a spiritual union with another, the author, and with others, those who are infected by it. And in the same way, beauty, or that which pleases us, can in no sense serve as the basis for the definition of art, nor can a series of objects which afford us pleasure serve as the model of what art should be. It is not the production of pleasing objects, and above all, it is not pleasure. If a man is infected by the author's condition of soul, if he feels this emotion and this union with others, then the object which has affected this is art. But if there be no such infection, if there be not this union with the author and with others who are moved by the same work, then it is not art. <sighs> okay. Essentially. Tolstoy expresses how art must be intentional, must not be pleasurable or beautiful, and that all creative things that elicit a collective emotional response is art. If I were able to meet Toadstool today and catch him up to speed on everything he missed post-mortem and had the ability to speak Russian, I would ask him three questions. One. If art is supposed to be intentional, and that it was meant not only for public consumption, but to become art and all that implies, then is every single poem of Emily Dickinson's off the table? Emily Dickinson, one of the most celebrated poets in American history, wrote poetry for fun. Maybe she'd write the odd poem to put in a gift basket for a friend or a lesbian lover, but I, I digress. Maybe she'd submit a couple to the newspaper, though none were published in her lifetime. But for the most part, what Dickinson wrote was for no one's eyes but her own. Am I supposed to believe that Emily Dickinson's poetry isn't art? It's well thought out, it's deep, it's relatable and compelling, but because you've declared that Emily Dickinson must have written all of those poems with the intention to make it art for all to see, none of that matters. This reminds me of the debate that people had last year about a two-year-old girl's drawings being auctioned for money as if they were high art. People who oppose this use the argument that it couldn't be art, since a two-year-old couldn't possibly comprehend the meaning of art, which was argued against, thus sparking another debate about whether children's drawings that weren't made to be seen or consumed were works of art, regardless of the intentions of the children to make it art in the first place. It was a dumb debate then, and it's a dumb debate now, and if people are going to argue about the artistic integrity of a two-year-old girl, then I will die on this hill in defense of Emily Dickinson's poetry. I will. What a queen. We love a queen. We love a, we love a lesbian queen. <laughs> Two. If art isn't supposed to be pleasurable or beautiful, 
Explain why film is considered to be an art form. Films are made to entertain and have been since its inception. The beginning of film is rooted in traveling exhibits where short films were featured as spectacle entertainment. Films later evolved into the lengthy and layered art form we know today due to the evolution of technology that brought us sound, editing, color, etc. But nonetheless, film has remained a form of entertainment due to its continued desire to inspire awe, whether through its spectacle or through its story. Entertainment brings pleasure and it attracts large audiences. So filmmaking has become an industry of entertainment aiming to please the masses. But that doesn't mean that films can't be artistic just because they aim to entertain. And just to clarify, Movies don't have to be happy to be pleasurable. There is an entertainment value in the heartbreak of a sad movie. Captivation is key. To keep the audience captivated, films must also be aesthetically pleasing. Cinematography, editing, lighting, sound, all these things exist to not only make films consumable, but also pretty. <laughs> La La Land, directed by Damien Chazelle, is considered to be a very artistic film of high merit, and this is in part due to its general aesthetic beauty. Its usage of color, stylization, music, choreography, cinematography, setting, and so on are what make La La Land so artistic and unique. It even won an Oscar for Best Cinematography, oh, although I wouldn't argue that the Oscars define art either, but there is certainly merit to La La Land's win in that department anyway. <laughs> this is not a joke. I'm afraid they read the wrong thing. This is not a joke. So if film, a young but valid art form, exists as a vehicle of pleasure and beauty, then where do your claims fit in here? Three, if a collective emotional response is what constitutes art, any emotional response. Does that mean that my and many other filmmakers pure and utter hatred of the Transformers franchise due to its terrible storytelling, sexism, toxic masculinity, tone deaf cinematography, and migraine-inducing direction make Transformers art? Does that make the collective disgust over a photo of Vladimir Putin's feet on Wiki feet high art? Maybe you toolbag would appreciate Russia's current leader's feet, but I know many people certainly do not. Specifically, my Culture of the Arts and Social Changes class, which I wrote this essay for in the first place. <laughs> in my opinion, art is supposed to be dynamic, especially in the emotions that it elicits. I may hate Transformers, but I recognize and accept that someone else may find Michael Bay's style of filmmaking to be artistic, and that argument has validity even if I disagree. To insinuate a need for a collective, or in other words, unanimous, emotional response for a piece of art to be valid seems so nonsensical and unrealistic. For example, Jackson Pollock, an abstract expressionist artist who made splatter paintings, was and still is criticized for making millions of dollars off of paintings that many don't think he put much thought into. But at the same time, he is praised as one of the most poignant and ingenious modern artists of the 20th century. People can find deeper meaning in things like this, but they can also find nothing of the sort, even if widely regarded. Should variable reactions be discounted? Can I truly discount Transformers, even if I dislike its heartless commercialization of other people, a lot of people, find value in it? The answer is absolutely. <laughs> um, but that doesn't discount the artistic value it may have objectively. Can you tell that I'm trying really hard not to give Michael Bay or Transformers any credit. <laughs> I don't mean to completely dump on Toledo here. He does make valid points at times. He does say the art should be accessible to everyone, that it can come from anywhere, in any language, and we shouldn't discount the artistic intelligibility of people who may be less educated or poor. But I'm calling out Toy Boy because his attempts to define art are dumb and honestly not very well done. He wrote this essay over the span of many, many years, and you can literally see him change his mind many, many times about the validity of certain kinds of art, specifically religious art. Some teachers of mankind, as Plato and his Republic, and people such as the primitive Christians, the strict Mohammedans, and the Buddhists have gone so far as to repudiate all art. Jesus Christ. 
Uh, the majority always has understood and still understands what we also recognize as being the very best art. The epic of Genesis, the gospel parables, folk legends, fairy tales, and folk songs are understood by all. A good and lofty work of art may be incomprehensible, but not too simple, unperverted peasant laborers. All that is highest is understood by them. It may be, and often is, unintelligible to erudite, perverted people destitute of religion. So good, great, universal religious art may be incomprehensible to a small circle of spoiled people, but certainly not to any large number of plain men. And then he goes on to say this, like, a few chapters later. Christian art, basing itself on a religious perception which demands the union of man, excludes from the domain of art good in subject matter, everything transmitting exclusive feelings which do not unite but divide men. Such art cannot in our time be esteemed good, for it attains the end which the religious perception of our time, i.e. Christianity, sets before humanity. And therefore, the Christian art of our time can be and is of two kinds. One, art transmitting feelings flowing from a religious perception of man's position in the world in relation to God and to his neighbor. Religious art in the limited meaning of the term. And two, art transmitting the simplest feelings of common life, but such always as are accessible to all men in the whole world universal art. You can sense the communist conflict within him. I reject the idea that art can be clearly defined, even in the most basic sense. For instance, in the book Cultural Politics, Class, Gender, Race, and the Postmodern World, authors Glenn Jordan and Chris Whedon claim that art is an expression of the better aspects of human nature. Uh... No? Often art is made to highlight the worst parts of human nature in order to make a point about humanity as a species, as people. Sometimes emphasizing on the grossest parts of life, society, the human psyche, can make truly inspired pieces. I think the variety of Stephen King horror novels, morally black and gray DC comic heroes and heroines, and Stanley Kubrick's film a Clockwork Orange can easily debase those claims. Art is not good or bad, intentional or unintentional, beautiful or ugly. Art has no boundaries, it is fluid. To give art regulations and set structure won't answer the question, what is art? But rather would answer the question of what art is not. We're done. This is the third time I have tried making this video. I, like, the first time I tried to make it, I ran out of space on my SD card. The second time I tried to make it, I erased half the footage. It was a fucking disaster. But we're here. We've done it. We did it. I just wanted to make this video because, well, first of all, I wrote an essay on it um, my first semester of college, and ever since I did that, I really just want to make a video essay to, like, shit on Tolstoy, <laughs> which I hope that I've achieved. But also, I really wanted to make this because I do plan on doing more with this channel. So far, all I've really done is post my schoolwork on here. Like, everything before this video is pretty much stuff I've done for school in one way or another. So, I'm really looking forward to making more videos about film specifically, about like internet culture, about art in general, and I'm going to be criticizing it. I will be making fun of it. I will be making content talking about the quality of things, and I don't want to act like I am the superior influence or superior voice when it comes to deciding what's good and what's bad and deciding what's art and what isn't. And so I decided to make this video to basically just be like, hey, I am not the authority and neither are you, so shut up, I can say whatever I want. I don't want me shitting on something that you might enjoy to be construed as me saying that it's bad and your opinion on it is wrong, but rather this is just my opinion and it doesn't need to be yours. And that's all I wanted to say. So if you want to see more content by me, which I do plan on making and putting on this channel, then please like, comment, and subscribe. I am very excited to become a YouTuber. <laughs> I'm really excited. I can't wait to get started. I have so many ideas and I can't wait to share them with you. Um, I'm already working on another video right now as we speak. So without any further ado, thanks for watching, I guess. Um, 
have a good day. I've never done this before. This is my first like real YouTube video. I'm excited. Okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs>